everybody, my name is Gabriel Varga. Welcome back to the channel, or if it's your first time here, welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about neck workouts. Now, most of us work our stomach, we work our chest, we work our back, we work our arms, our legs, but we forget about the neck. Why is the neck important for combat sports? First off, a strong neck will help you absorb impact. If I know I'm gonna get hit and my neck is loose and I take a shot, my head is gonna snap. But if I have the ability to tighten through the neck, I will be able to absorb the shot a little better. Also, when you're in kickboxing or Muay Thai or MMA, people can get a double hand clench, a plum on you, and they can start dragging down on your neck. If you don't have the ability to hold your head up as they drag and they try to ragdoll you around, you're gonna get your chin tucked to your chest and then you're gonna get kneed in the face. So doing your neck workouts are very important. Now, what we're gonna focus on today is an at-home neck exercise that I have been using for years now and it is so much better than all the other ones because in the past I saw two options, two ways that people condition their neck. The first one was grabbing a stick. This is what they did in Thailand. There was a stick with a rope attached to it. At the bottom of the rope, there was a weight. People would bite down, literally bite on this stick, and then lift the weight up and down. And man, sanitation wise, just sharing that stick is disgusting, but also it can't be great for your teeth. And the other way I've seen people do neck workouts is take a weight, put it on their head and do little crunches, basically with just the neck, with the weight sitting on the forehead. I tried both those options, did not enjoy either of them. And then my sparring partner, Josh Johnsey, showed me this neck exercise that we're gonna do today. Like I said, we can do it at home. We don't need any weights. It's a high volume exercise. We're doing a lot of them, but I find it personally more fatiguing than the others. And it's really helped me build up my neck resilience, my neck resistance to getting the neck snap down when somebody pulls or just the ability to take shots and absorb them a little bit better. All right guys, let's get into this neck exercise right away now that I've explained why and how these are so important. What I want us to start with is our heels to our bum and we're just gonna lean back almost like we're in a sit up position. Now, instead of doing anything with my abs and lifting my back off the ground, I am just going to poke my chin as high as I can up towards the ceiling. And then from there, I'll lower. When I lower, I'm not gonna try and let my head weight rest on the ground. I'm going to lift and then just touch my head quickly to the ground. We're gonna do a three second hold on the top. Hold for three seconds up and then I'll say down, up. And we'll hold for three seconds, down, up. We're gonna go through 15 of these and then we have to follow with another three sets where we do a little variation of this. And then after that, we're gonna flip onto our stomach and instead of focusing on the front of the neck, we're gonna get the back of the neck. This drill is surprisingly fatiguing. If you can make it through this whole thing, good for you. Follow along guys, let's get started right now. And up, one, two, three, down. 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 Up, just hold it there now. And I'm just gonna count it out. You drop and you raise. One, two, three, as high as you can. Poke that chin up. Four, five, six, seven, all the way to 10, eight, nine, and 10. And relax. Now you can drop your head down, take a little break. Next drill, we're going to poke up and then we're gonna chuck, tuck our chin to our chest and then from there we release and we drop. So every time I count, it's up and in and then out and down. All right, again, same as last one, hold the top position. When you do these ones, you're probably gonna feel the fatigue in the front, possibly even in the back as well and in your jaw if you try and clench too much. So try to avoid clenching your jaw. All right, let's get up and tuck and one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one. Two, three, 
and four and down ah i always feel these ones in here really really bad the the front side for me from here is actually harder than when we flip over now let's continue on on this one we poke our head up and we look to the left and then when i say out we come right back to that neutral position and we drop then we go to the other side we're going to do 14 of these where we come up look to the left we come back in we drop and then we come up we look to the right we come back in and we drop all right let's get started and up and one now looking off to the other side two be very crisp with your motions three Four, like a robot moving. Five, don't cut any corners. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four more, one, two, three, and time. Sorry, that was the full size. There are seven on each side there. Whoa. Get that neck fatigue. Like I said, I feel it in the front, but I also feel it dramatically in the back of the neck. Let it rest right now. Now this time we're going to poke up and then we're going to tuck ear to the shoulder. Make sure when you do it, you're not coming up and then dropping and then tucking your ear to your shoulder. You have to maintain that chin tucking towards the ceiling, that little lift and then ear to the shoulder. All right, again, we'll go seven per side. And up. And one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Four oh, burns. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, one, two, almost there, three, and down. Oh boy. All right. Ah. Now, that was the front of the neck, specifically targeting the front of the neck. Now we are going to do the back of the neck. When we do the back of the neck, what we're looking for here is starting with our chin to the ground and if i keep my back all straight there's not much range of motion so i arch very slightly when i arch very slightly i'm going to engage my lower back we're going to put the hands up tight to the side like this and now we engage the upper back from there what we're going to do is we're going to touch our nose to the ground and then tuck our chin into our chest we're basically trying to do this a very unattractive look here where we go from here and we make a double chin. We go back out to relax, in, and we'll hold for three seconds. Then we'll repeat everything else that we just did. We'll tuck in, and we'll be looking forward. And then we'll come out of it. So follow along with me on this one, guys. Remember, hands out to the side, back slightly arched up, and we'll start from the top position. And one, nose to the ground and up. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, and five and relax good all right this time same thing tuck your chin up to your chest to get that double chin effect and then look in front and hold from there and set the back up the arms up nose to the ground and one looking forward hold for three seconds two every time nose to the ground three four five this side is much easier for me than the other one six 
seven, but it'll get harder as we do our additional drills here. Eight, nine, 10, one, two, three, Hopefully you guys feel it in your back as well. Squeeze those shoulder blades. Four. And five. And relax. And similar to last time, now we go into tucking our chin to our chest and then looking to one side. And then we come out of it, we poke our chin down to the ground, touch our nose to the floor. We lift up, we look the other side. Ready. 14 of these, seven per side. And up, look one way. Two, looking the other way. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, almost there. One, two, three, and four. Hold for three, two, one, and drop. And last one, guys. We're going to pull our chin into our chest and we are going to turn our head just slightly like the last drill we did where we're looking up towards the ceiling. We're gonna tuck our ear to our shoulder. So we pull in, we tuck our ear to our shoulder. All right, let's set up for 14 of these. And up, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten, one, two. Almost there, three, and four, and down. All right guys, nicely done. Now if I was gonna recommend you how many times a week you should be doing this to build that neck conditioning, I would say if you are somebody who does the sport for fun, aim for two times per week. I think that'll be sufficient. If you are a competitor and you're actually wanting to utilize this for competition, you want to strengthen that neck for competition, I would say three or four times is gonna be good. Personally, I use this drill at the end of my training session. I sort of lump it together with my stomach workout, my back workout, although if you do that drill correctly, that can be a back workout for you. Just remember guys, the neck is a muscle that often gets neglected. We don't wanna neglect that, we wanna make sure it's strong. It's gonna keep us from getting our neck collapsed, it's gonna keep us from getting hit and having our head jar as much as it normally would. And personally for me, I like this so much more than grabbing a stick, biting down and lifting where I'm worried about damaging my teeth or shifting teeth. This just seems like the smarter way to go and overall the impact is very low because you're only lifting your own head, which I really like. Body weight exercises work really well for me. I think they'll work really well for you, avoiding injuries. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, get subscribed if you haven't already. Train hard guys, I'll see you back here soon for another episode.